Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend Harry Eisentat. All right, Tahiti, how you guys doing? Yeah, yeah all right. Um, my name is Ari Eisenstadt. Uh, I am so honored to be here. I want to thank Randy, the Seasteading Institute, uh, the French Polynesian people, and all the sponsors here that, that made this happen. Uh, this is so inspiring, and, and it's, it's a really humbling experience to be able to present here today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about cross-sectoral collaboration for sustainable ocean development. Um, again, my name is Ari Eisenstadt. Uh, it looks like some formatting is off, uh, so happy to share these slides later. Uh, and many of these pictures are my own. This is uh, something we took earlier in the week of uh, the island of Moria. Uh, so uh, happy to connect with any of you on, on social media. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm 29 right. years old. Am I, I not speaking into the mic? I, I give you mine. Okay. So can stay in front of it. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm 29 years old, uh, representing now the largest uh, segment of the population in the world. Uh, how's that? Good? Um, of the, the youth in the world. And my background is in impact investing. I started a social venture capital fund to invest in the next generation of socially, environmentally, and technologically conscious entrepreneurs. And throughout that process, I started to get involved with the United Nations. I was the International Chamber of Commerce representative to the UN for the Sustainable Development Goal negotiations. Uh, and a deep passion of mine is in building sustainable floating communities to further these goals. Now, a quick survey. How many of you have heard of the Sustainable Development Goals? About half, maybe a little less than half. Well, it's a, a big honor to be able to tell you about these goals uh, for the first time for some of you that haven't heard of them. In 2015, for the first time in human history, all of the governments of the world agreed to something. And this is no trivial thing. It's truly monumental that by the year 2030, we're going to address virtually all of the world's problems, from ending poverty, ending hunger, education, healthcare, gender equality, clean water for all, addressing all of our environmental issues, from life on land to life below water to sustainable cities. And of course, peace and partnerships for the goals. Now, this is something that is going to be quite expensive to, to achieve. Estimates are about $120 trillion to the year 2030. And of course, we can't just rely on governments to do this. We need to engage civil society, the private sector, and NGOs. And that's something that I'll be talking about, how we can create those partnerships together. Currently, I am the co-executive director of an independent foundation where we're starting to measure those goals. And just about a month ago, we released our report for the 100 largest companies in the world, showing how they are all working for each of these sustainable development goals. The problem is that in our annual reports, the, the documents where you have a legal responsibility to report, only about 30 to 60 percent of that SDG data you can find in the numbers. So we go a step deeper to really look at what those commitments are. Interestingly, only about 24 percent of the 100 largest companies in the world are explicitly talking about the SDGs. Another 58% are mentioning them, not by name, but, but it's, it's certainly targeting those themes. And another 18% are not at all. We see a steady growth of it, that increasing, that there is this movement now to really engage the private sector, that your fiduciary responsibility is not just about making money, but having a social and environmental return as well. So this is our report. Uh, would welcome you all to download that off of our ungsii.org website. Um, and I'd like to sh switch gears a little to a more of my story of building sustainable floating communities uh, here in Silicon Valley, or back there in Silicon Valley. Um, this is uh, on the outside of the valley. This is uh, Mavericks right here for the Mavericks Invitational. And uh, is there a, yeah, r right here are about some of the elite surfers in the world surfing up to 40 foot waves. An interesting thing about Silicon Valley that many people don't know is that the computer industry was really started by the sinking of the Titanic. After the Titanic sank, it was mandated that all boats needed to have radios on them. And since the San Francisco Bay was such a maritime hub, 
they started building the radios there, which was the framework for the computer industry. It also was the birth of the venture capital, starting out as a risk capital industry, that investors were able to put money into businesses that didn't yet have revenue. This was a revolutionary idea and has, uh, has really allowed to pay off in, in taking these high risks. It also is a hub of social consciousness that some of the world's forward thinkers in civil rights and human rights and environmental rights really came from this community. This is myself outside of Pacifica where, where I lived for two years uh, surfing. Uh, and something that, that I'm really passionate about is being in the water and, and with the water. Uh, I was living in Madison, Wisconsin, a landlocked, uh, landlocked uh, state. Uh, where our record was negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit for our winters. So this is certainly different here in Tahiti. Uh, I moved out to, to the Bay Area to start this new venture capital fund called Dream Ventures, where we will we're able to take the microfinance model and apply it to venture capital, investing in ideas for the sustainable development goals. I had the opportunity to teach and lead different programs at Stanford and Berkeley. It was very exciting to hear about Berkeley here in French Polynesia. And we started up a social innovation center, actually inspired in many ways by the downtown project and Tony Shea's uh, vision at Draper University, wh where I went. Uh, there we brought together startups, artists, musicians, uh, chefs, uh, and wanted to create this hub of innovation right in downtown Palo Alto by Stanford's campus. Uh, the challenging thing, though, in the use case permits we had were that the first thing that it said for our regulations is that no dancing was allowed. <laughs> so we saw very quickly that these regulations on land uh, really needed to be innovated upon and where we found that seasteading was a clear winner for that. I also saw firsthand the effects of climate change uh, from the rising sea levels uh, to the droughts. Uh, California went through the largest drought in 2,000 years. Uh, then followed by a complete replenishing of the watershed just within a month. So we're seeing dr ex really extreme weather. Uh, and of course, the refugee, re refugee crisis. Um, this isn't just happening in places in the developing world, uh, but we're seeing huge migration patterns to California, uh, which has really resulted in a housing crisis. Um, I experienced my own housing crisis. I was living right across the street right here. Uh, this, was my, this was my little beach. And I woke up one day to find news trucks outside. Uh, the, the cliffs were falling into the ocean and they had to evacuate the apartments. Uh, so I, I joke now that I'm a climate refugee, although I, I don't deserve as much sympathy as many of the others. So moving from my land-based home, I moved on to a boat in my own little seastead. This is a, a catamaran uh, custom built by the inventor of the conveyor belt. Uh, and it's been really exciting being in this new floating, uh, this little floating home. It's allowed me to travel, to not have to pay San Francisco real estate rent prices. You have a deep connection to nature. There's this uh, beautiful quote by John F. Kennedy about how the makeup of our bodies are the same concentration of salt as the water, that we evolved from the ocean, and it's, it's great to come back to that water. Uh, and it really allows for the freedom. I lived in Oakland for a year, and now I was able to move and shift my community now to South San Francisco. We also were able to have and host our United Nations Innovation, uh, innovation Group out on the boat, uh, where we ha had discussions of entrepreneurs and intrapreneurs talking about building these partnerships for the sustainable development goals, fostering creativity and new startup ideas uh, and a new type of environment to share this type of co-working. But the great thing is that it really scales from there. And the Seasteading Institute inspired a new type of festival called Ephemerile, which some of you have been to. Now, Ephemerile is this decentralized group of about 1,000 people, hundreds of different platforms. These, these are individual boats, islands. This, there's a floating dance floor here. Artists, musicians, we have a whole speaker series and these incredible new experiences starting to prototype seasteading really for, for a week at a time in, this, in the Sackton Delta. This is a picture of a 100-foot tugboat we brought out there with about a crew of 40 people. Uh, and you can see some of the other islands in the distance. We also created the Aqua Conference. So within that Stockton community there, not only this is our tugboat, uh, we worked on creating a social innovation center on a 300-foot 
cruise ship that we have been working to restore. Uh, we hosted a film festival there, speaker series, music and interactive art. Uh, we hosted Randy and Joe, they were the, the keynote speakers for our conference there, a really inspiring weekend. Um, I've also had the opportunity to travel all over the world and see how people were living and interacting with the water. Uh, this is the, the floating platform in Rotterdam that the, the Blue 21 community developed, and it's such an inspiring design. I hope you all have the opportunity to see it. Uh, there are groups in Costa Rica that are working on building eco-villages. Uh, in Bangladesh, I was there recently, and they have floating schools that will pick up students there uh, in the largest river delta in the world. So now the question is, how do we accelerate this seasteading? How do we create these new partnerships to make them sustainable, meaningful, and creative? The first, I believe, is really in the private sector, in creating new businesses around aquapreneurship. This is a robot floating drone, or an underwater submersible drone, uh, by a company called Aquai and they are working to get rid of the hyacinth invasive species in, in the waterways, but also being able to do all types of humanitarian work. So inspiring social entrepreneurs and government regulations and lobbying for that is going to be a key for developing on the water. We also need to move impact investors there that are looking for long-term returns, not just for financial impact, but social and environmental impact as well. And we need to be able to invest in exponential technology, not just incremental growth, but really these completely new designs like we heard of with nanotechnology. The next step is with nonprofits, and this is a pixelated picture of uh, my experience at the D-Wave quantum computer at NASA. Uh, this was really inspiring to see uh, this group called Innovation 4.4 which is a new NGO. They just got a Space Act agreement with NASA uh, to start commercializing space technology. And just like the Seasteading Institute, uh, just like our organization, UN Global Sustainability Index Institute, the nonprofits can be that bridge of, of knowledge, of philanthropy, of science to really develop that. And just a quick thing about this uh, quantum computer that you can't see, it's the coldest point in the known universe, and they're able to compute 100 million times faster than a classical computer. The last piece is really governments. How do we start to work with new governments and what I believe is the most important governmental agency now, especially with these new elections around the world, is really the United Nations system. We need to align our humanitarian action, we need to have restorative justice, and we need to look at security, not just for, for our defenses, but really our health and education. And I believe that by doing this and going to the Ocean Conference coming up, we can start to really allow for these new seasteads to have representation at the highest levels of international government. Of course, now a large part of that again comes back to funding. And we are now currently developing a new impact investment platform, not just for the largest companies in the world, but the smallest, the ideas, to be able to invest in these new aquapreneurs to work for the sustainable development goals. So I'll end with asking, wh what is your dream? What new business, what new NGO, what new governmental initiative do you want to start, and how can we all work together to achieve that? Thank you so much. Thank you, Ari.